Hi folks, I'm Jan, a programming language engineer at Twig, and I am the lead developer of the Nickel project. Today we are releasing Nickel version 1.0, and I wanted to take the occasion to make a short video tutorial on how to get Nickel up and running, the CLI, DLSP, but also give you a few tips and workflows uh, that I basically use all the time when writing Nickel. But what is Nickel? So Nickel is a generic configuration language. Usually when you write configuration, you might use a data description format such as JSON or YAML. And, you know, it does the job for small configuration. It's static, simple, and easy to read. But JSON is also very limited. If you have to handle larger configurations, such as cloud deployments, infrastructure as code, then JSON might not be up to the task. You cannot have a single source of truth. If you have to use, say, the same IP in different places of your configuration, you have no choice but to copy and paste. If you want to deploy five machines that are very similar, but with one option changing, then you don't have a choice. You have to copy and paste. You have no modularity, no abstraction, and no code reuse. Well, in fact, um, Terraform uh, or say Chef have their own bespoke configuration language that is more explosive than JSON. But it feels like they somehow evolved from static configuration into this strange middle ground between JSON and a programming language. Also, they are specific to their own tools, so you can only use them with, well, Terraform or Chef. Our stance is that if you need this additional expressive power, you should probably buy the bullet and use a language that has been designed from the ground up as a programming language, albeit limited and specialized to configuration. Also, this language should be universal in that you can use it for your whole stack instead of using 10 different um, specialized configuration language. And that's why we came up with Nickel. Um, you can read more about Nickel in the description. Check it out, I put some references. But for now, let's get our feet wet. So I'm going to show how to install Nickel and I want to use a fresh virtual machine, which is a Debian stable, so that I don't cheat and use any previous state of, of my system. Um, so I'm on the Nickel Lang website and on the static page, if you click on getting started, you should have um, a guide to get Nickel up and running. This guide has three different um, possible methods. Usually I try to make this video using Nix, but actually if you don't have Nix before, that's maybe not the easiest way. And also it doesn't work if you're on Windows. So if you already have any one of those tools, please follow the corresponding um, guide. Otherwise, I think in the end using Cargo is actually um, the easiest. So Cargo is just the package manager of the worst programming language, but and Nickel is, is written in REST. So if you go to Cargo, we are going to the installation method and probably we'll have to um, download and run some installation scripts. Um, I want to proceed with installation. I trust Cargo will do the right thing. If we go back to the Nickel installation guide, you will see that then you just have to do Cargo install Nickel Lang. So let's try that. Um, okay, I should be less stupid and follow the last advice of Cargo which is to source the proper um, environment. Now I should have Cargo and I could install Nickel Lang. Perfect. Okay, fast forward to the end. It actually did build a few stuff. But now we do have a running Nickel executable. Yay. We probably also want to install um, the LSP. Okay, fast forward to the end of step two, we should have 
and let us be up and running. I actually copied my um, Novim configuration, including Coq, which is an LSP engine, to this virtual machine. And I'm going to add the nickel LSP. I need to cheat a bit and see how I did that. On my man, I have to add um, an entry there. If you don't have cogs, that's not very useful. We have a um, guide for other editors and um, like Emacs, there is a VS Code plugin. I'm just doing that right now to show you that I should be able to get the LSP in the end. Okay, that sounds like a proper configuration. Let's restart Vim and try to edit a file. Um, and I seem to have some LSP going there. All right. Okay. That was pretty simple. You may have additional steps depending on your editor again, but this is probably right now the simplest way to install Nickel. And I'm back on my laptop. The first tip I wanted to give is related to the Nickel subcommand query. If we try to print the help of this subcommand, it says print the metadata attached to an attribute given as a path. So what does this mean? Let's say we have a very simple configuration. It's not very important if you don't understand all of the syntax right now, but what we are saying is that we are defining a schema. Um, you can write some documentation that says that you should have an option called foo.bar defined in your configuration. You can use markdown um, inside your documentation, and we say that this should be a string. Then we write a very small config that actually use the schema. So this last line says that this configuration must respect the schema we have just defined. And now, if you try to query this configuration, you will see the list of available fields. Query takes an additional path and if we put foo.bar, which is a path, we get the metadata associated to this specific option. So query is useful to extract information from a configuration. A second usage that I make of query is to get the documentation of a standard library. You can use query inside the ripple and um, it's a query command with a colon. And you can query any value, including std, which is a special value that contains the standard library. But in the end, it doesn't have anything that special. It's just a record that is present by default. And so if you query it, you will just get the list of available fields. You see that there are some functions like digitalize, but also array, which is another record which contains all the array function of the standard library. So if I do array as a path, the second argument of query is an attribute path, field path, I will get the list of function inside the array submodule. Finally, if I do query array dot filter, for example, I will get the specific type and documentation uh, for filter. So Query is really useful to get the documentation in real time without having to um, switch windows and, and look inside your web browser. The second tip I wanted to give is about typing. Nickel has studied typing, but it's not enabled by default, so to speak. By default, configuration code is dynamically typed. So if you do something stupid like one plus A, the LSP won't share like you. Now, if you try to evaluate this, well, um, Nickel will say dynamic type error 
because plus expect both arguments to be a number. This is a very simple and stupid example. But still, now if we do something still stupid, but um, a bit less obvious, what we will do is that um, we will revert the argument of a rated map. I don't even know what this will give actually like as an error, but probably something strange. Okay, it's actually not too bad because we have a nice thing called contract in nickel. It's um, pretty spawn on. But still, the LSP doesn't really give you anything useful before you run the program. Something useful to debug if you get dynamic type error or something that is a bit um, hard to understand can be to try to statically type uh, this section. But to do that in Nickel, you have to write a type annotation and so to provide a, a type. What should we use there? Well, we have something called type world card, which just says, please type checker, to find a type for us. And if we do that, we now have a static type error inside the editor. Sometimes it can be the case that your code is actually fine, but won't type check because the type checker is more rigid and rigorous um, than dynamic type checking. Still, as a first step, if something goes wrong and dynamic type error is really hard to understand, um, that might be a good idea to put um, a type annotation with this underscore, uh, this type wildcard, and see what the LSP um, or the nickel binary will say about that. And voila, that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover here. I hope you enjoyed the video. There will be more nickel content coming in the next weeks or months, so stay tuned and don't forget to check the links um, inside the description. See you.